And I wanted to give a welcome to Bill McPeck and Pat and Pauline. Um, if you want to, I don't know if you guys can see where the chat is on the Zoom to um, just let us know where you're calling from. So, Pauline, where are you calling in from? Uh, <laughs> New Berlin, Wisconsin. New Berlin, Wisconsin. We got Bill is in Maine. Hi, Bill. And Pat and Nate, I don't know if you guys are still on. If you can hear us, I've unmuted you all as we wait for some people to come on and uh, hear from hear this really special chat with uh, Dr. Mort Orman today. And, well, I'll, I'll give you this feel in just a minute. We're going to give everyone a, a few moments to come online. Um, how I met Dr. Mort and um, why I think what he does is, is really so special. So... Uh, so, Pauline, what attracted you most to, to, to click and, and sign up to come here today? What's your biggest challenge with stress? Uh, <laughs> I'm actually here to, uh, to hear what Dr. Orman has to say. I'm, uh, I don't really have a huge issue with stress at the moment, but um, I'm always interested in what Dr. Orman has to say. Great, great. Sounds good. How about you, Bill? Do you want to type type in here what uh, what was most appealing to you to come on the come on and listen to Dr. Orman today? Actually, I uh, do a lot of training in the area of stress and stress management, and I'm always um, interested to what somebody else uh, has to say. Um, my particular interest right now is. Uh, organizational stressors and what organizations can do at the organizational level to address uh, employee stress. Great. Yeah, I think it's, I think you're going to see it, see it from a, a bit of a different perspective on how Dr. Orman uh, views that whole concept. So welcome. Thank you. Uh, and welcome. Uh, somebody, somebody's name says star. Welcome star. Where are you calling in from? Colorado. Ah, oh, great. Where, where in Colorado? Colorado Springs. Okay. We're all really looking forward to hear Dr. Orman's viewpoint on the ultimate stress relief system. So I, I know what, a, what an unusual take it is, and I think that's what's made you so successful, Mark. Would, would you agree with that? Uh, yeah. It's very uh, – and I've been doing this for over 30 years, but it, it, it's – very different than what most uh, people are talking about. Most stress experts are talking about and, you know, type of advice that they're um, distributing. So it's been that way for 30 years. It'll probably be that way for another 30 years. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's always amazing how people, when they hear a completely new viewpoint or a completely fresh viewpoint, uh, they, they really appreciate it. Um, and they say, how come I haven't heard that before? <laughs> well, nobody else is talking about it. That's the reason why. Well, I'll tell you, when I first heard your method, I was like, what? That can't be true. And I was like, oh, my God, it is true. I, it took me a minute to get, get a handle on it. <laughs> it's, it's funny. I was, at a, I was at a conference years ago and um, talking about it was a medical conference. And I was talking, talking about stress. And I was one of the last presenters of the day. And um, after every presentation, there was a question and answer period. And yeah. there was this one guy, this one uh, bald guy that would ask a question of every speaker. And he, he was really nasty. And he, was just, you know, <laughs> he would try to pick apart with some of something in their, in their presentation and challenge them on it. And so I gave my talk and then question and answer. And sure enough, he was the only guy who raised his hand. <laughs> <laughs> so I called on him for the, for the question and I braced myself, you know, and, to, and he said, I couldn't believe it. He said, you know, you're the first person that's ever talked about stress. It's never made any damn sense to me. Oh, <laughs> nice. Like the only positive comment that he made. To me. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> uh. All right, so we're going to get started here. I'm going to mute everybody, and, and I've got to unmute you, Mort. It's going to take me a minute. Actually, you can unmute yourself now. Unmute yourself, and uh, we're going to – there you go. All right, you should be unmuted now. Okay, you can hear me? And, yeah, gotcha. So I want to welcome everyone to the Globetrotting Entrepreneur. 
And we've got today really a very, very special person, Dr. Mort Orman. Uh, he's an internal medicine physician who specializes in helping su successful professionals, business owners, and entrepreneurs eliminate stress from their lives without having to manage, manage it. And I think that is really the key that we're going to be talking about today. It's not managing stress. It's going to be about eliminating it and totally relieving it. So Mort is the founder of the Stress Mastery Academy. He's the creator of the Ultimate Stress Relief System. And for more than 30 years now, he's been making, he has been America's leading stress elimination expert. So if you ever wish you could make negative emotions like anger, frustration, anxiety, and worry quickly disappear, or if you want fewer interpersonal conflicts and relationship failures, or you'd like to substantially reduce your stress at work, Dr. Orman can show you how to do all of these things without using drugs, relaxation techniques, or other time-consuming stress management techniques. So without any further ado, I really want to introduce Dr. Orman to, to go through his uh, slideshow here and uh, share, with us, share with us some of these great techniques. Let's hear about it, Mort. All right, great. Well, first I want to thank you, Barbara, for putting this on and for wanting to do this for uh, your clients and the people who you work with. And um, we've invited, I've invited some of the people from uh, who follow me to come on if they were interested as well. So thank you for taking the initiative to put this together. And I'm very happy to be here and share these ideas with uh, the group. So the first thing I just want to uh, set, set the stage a little bit about who this is for. And it's basically, uh, it, it's very uh, wide and broad in scope. Anybody who is success oriented, high achiever type person, I think would get a lot of value out of this uh, webinar tonight. Um, Basically, anybody could, but it's particularly geared for, as I mentioned, professionals, entrepreneurs, people who are interested in, in high uh, achieving and success and, and don't want to keep paying the price that we typically pay when we go on that track. And uh, we, we end up sacrificing a lot of things in, in pursuit of the goals that we set for ourselves. So that's kind of what this is all about. Um, and... Um, a little bit more about me. Uh, Barbara did mention a good bit. Uh, as, as she mentioned, I'm an internal medicine physician, but that's not very unusual and probably not why you're here tonight. But the unusual piece is the stress, particularly stress elimination. So what I do is not, it, it's different than stress management. It's, I'm not opposed to stress management. This, I, I look at this as being very complimentary. Um, it can, for people who are into stress management, this can add a new um, avenue a new way of uh, approaching stress and uh, people who haven't got into stress management yet, uh, this could be a very uh, viable alternative if they wanted to pursue this. So again, I mentioned uh, one of the problems, one of the reasons we're doing this tonight is because successful people uh, uh, today in the high paced, uh, fast paced society that we have um, are, are paying a significant price in many ways um, for their success. And including doctors like myself, dentists, other professionals, and corporate folks, entrepreneurs, um, we tend to um, be so focused on achievement and so focused on creating financial security for ourselves and our families that sometimes we end up sacrificing our health. We end up putting up with a lot of stress that we really don't have to put up with. It's just we've kind of been convinced that there's not much you can do to get rid of it. You can't really eliminate it. And I'm kind of here to tell you tonight that that's not really true. There are ways to eliminate stress if you have the right perspective. So um, for the last 30 years, as Barbara mentioned, I've been working in this field, really helping people live better, have better relationships, have more fun, laugh a lot more, and, and, and have more happiness and more success. Uh, again, without the, all the sacrifices that we normally uh, pay. So uh, over the years, people have found this so valuable that they've been very happy to pay me, um, you know, thousand dollars a month or more to work in my elite one-on-one -on -one coaching program to help them learn these stress elimination principles. And uh, I want to share some of them with you today. And um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you some new things about stress you probably haven't heard before, and that very few people correctly understand today. So most of the people that you live with, uh, your family members, people you work with, your friends, uh, probably are not going to have this particular perspective on stress. And so I want to ho hopefully open uh, up some new ways of thinking for you and show you that it really is possible to eliminate 75% or more of the, the stress that we normally put up with in life. And 
as Barbara mentioned by that, I mean, you know, emotional um, stress such as anger and frustration and worry and guilt and relationship conflicts and stress at work and um, all kinds of other problems that we can experience. So that's the price that we're paying, and that's hopefully we don't have to keep paying that price as time goes on. Yeah. Um, here are a couple of you know, specific things I'm going to share with you tonight. Um, I'm going to show you how to make one simple change in your thinking about stress. That you don't have to wait till tomorrow. You don't have to wait till two weeks from now. And this is something you can do right here on this webinar tonight that will open up a whole new way of thinking about stress that will change, hopefully, the way that you approach it from tonight on. And so we'll go through that one uh, change, which is, it appears very minor, but it actually has a lot of implications. Also, I'm going to um, talk about the downside of managing stress, that, that it's very hard to win um, the game uh, through stress management. And I'm, that's why I say it's for losers. Again, it's not, not that I don't think the stress management take stress management techniques don't have value. They have a tremendous amount of value. They have a lot of health benefits. There are a lot of good things to say about stress management techniques, but when you talk about eliminating stress, uh, they're not that great for elimination. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And then uh, the most important thing is I'm going to show you what's really, what I think is really holding most people back from having the type of stress-free life that they really love to have and actually that they have the ability to have. So I'm going to share a little bit about my own story and how I was able to um, accomplish that and, um, uh, and how you can actually do the same thing. So again, this is, this is an excellent webinar for someone if you're interested in having less emotional distress, less anger, less anxiety, less guilt, uh, frustration. If you're interested in having fewer relationship conflicts and um, reducing the odds of ending up divorced or having some big you know, business partnership failure that, that could be very costly. Uh, just having less stress overall and, and just not paying such a heavy price to be able to continue um, pursuing success um, and financial security uh, that you that, that we most of us want to have for ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so one of the things, and if that if those things weren't enough by themselves, <laughs> which I think they should be, to uh, to have you stick around to the end of the presentation, um, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit about. Uh, the ultimate stress release system that I developed 30 years ago and that I've been using in my life basically every day since then to, um, to keep my stress levels low. And also at the very end, I'll tell you about a, a home study course that I have that where you can get the same system for yourself if you're interested. But even if that's something you, you don't particularly want to do, at, at the end, I'm going to, uh, everybody who's on the webinar, um, I, I picked out one of the um, one of the very powerful stress elimination tools from my system. It's just one of many tools in the system, but it's, it's something I will give you a link to download for free at the end of the, uh, of the webinar as, as sort of a gift for staying with this all the way and, and learning everything that there is to learn tonight. Great. That's fantastic. So I hope all of you stick around to the end to, to be able to get that, that very special tool. Yes. Excellent. So, um, I was going to go into my story. Did you want to ask me anything or talk about anything? Well, one thing we did, we were chatting with as we were getting ready that I think would be really interesting for a lot of people on this particular call who know that I, we do a lot with meditation as part of the retreat center here, and I use that with almost all of my business clients. And we were just chatting about what your view is of using meditation as part of your daily practice. Do you, do you do that as part of your daily practice or what's your view on meditation in particular? Um, I, I think meditation basically is very valuable. And uh, there are, of course, lots of different forms of meditation. You can do it in different ways for different purposes, but you can use it as a purely relaxation technique. Um, you can use it, you know, to change your mindset, to improve self-awareness, to, become, you know, live more in the here and now if you practice it on a regular basis. So I think all those things are very beneficial. Uh, over the years, I have used meditation in different contexts um, for myself. I don't do it as part, it's not a big part of my daily practice because I don't really, no, I almost incorporate, I've incorporated a lot of meditative aspects to my daily, into my daily life without having to practice yeah. them because yeah. I, I used to run, I used to do long distance running. 
and I did it as a meditation. I didn't do it uh, as, as cardiovascular, although I got cardio, cardiovascular benefits. It was really a mindset uh, uh, alteration for me, and it, I did it for like 25 years. And when you do that every day for 25 years, it becomes part of you. And, you know, you, you can't not, you know, be sort of naturally meditating as you go through your day. So after you've put that much, you know, practice into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I do, I would say I, it's, it's part of me. It's not something that I, uh, that I do a lot as far as a conscious intentional practice. Although sometimes I do, uh, when I, I do, when I go to the dentist, I use it <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to let you, you keep moving on that. Let's go, let's okay. go forward. Okay. So it's a little bit about, I, I want to share with you a little bit how I went from being a very typical high stressed physician or a high stress person to for the first 30 years of my life. Um, I'm now, a matter of fact, next week I'm going to be 69. So uh, I, I divide my life into like two 30 year, 30 plus year blocks. And the first 30 plus years I had a tremendous amount of stress. And, and then I had this amazing breakthrough and uh, developed the system. And, um, and the last 30 some years of my life, have been amazingly stress-free. So I want to tell you how that, how that transition happened or that transformation happened and, and what led to it. So when, like most successful people, a lot of my stress started earlier in life when I was in high school and college. Uh, but clearly when I went to, when I started medical school, things really escalated. And I just started having a lot of problems with anxiety and anger and irritability and um, I was having relationship issues all over the place, and I just wasn't all that happy. I mean, I was, I did okay academically. I wasn't struggling academically, but I, you know, I just wasn't feeling really uh, good inside, and and uh, I was really bothered by having all, you know, being so uh, labile, you know, emotionally, and by having so many relationship issues. And, and I had always been a very successful person, so everything I had sort of put my mind to, you know, for example, I was you know, really good in most sports that I, uh, that I uh, took on. Like I said, I was good uh, academically. I was very successful. Um, almost everything I turned my mind to, I could succeed at, except for, for this stress problem, you know, and all the various aspects of that. I just could not figure it out. And it was very frustrating. And then, so uh, as, as I went along in my medical training, things got worse and worse and more and more stressful. And no matter what I tried, it didn't matter. Um, you know, things just didn't work out. I had a, I had a series of failed relationships with women. Now I wasn't at that time, I wasn't married. I didn't have kid, a kid, but if I had, it would look like it would have ended up like this, <laughs> which is how most of those relationships ended up. Yeah. It was very, it was very demoralizing again, you know, to have failure after failure when you've succeeded at other things. Here I was a successful physician. Now I'm in my first few years of practice and I'm still stressed out and tense and anxious and, um, you know, just, uh, it was, it was not only was the stress bothersome, but having to put on, you know, having to pretend that I had it all together and present myself to the outside world as, you know, I'm a, I'm a together physician, a professional, uh, I've got a successful practice. I'm doing well financially, you know, so I had this added burden of having to, sort of try to convince the world that I wasn't feeling like I was feeling inside and I wasn't, you know. How, how much do you think that added to your stress level? A lot. To have to feel like you were, yeah. You're walking around every day and you're, you're, you know that you're trying to make people think that you're happy and you're, yeah. you got it all together. And you know yeah. inside that, you know, you get triggered very easily and the slightest thing will make you angry or frustrated and, uh, and sometimes your emotions just start running away and, and, and screw up your day and you can't, you know, concentrate the way you want to. Fortunately, it didn't affect my, at least I don't think it affected my performance as a physician. Good. Excellent. Good to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I really, it, it bothered me and I kept trying. I mean, for years I kept trying to do things. Um, so like I said, I tried all the different kinds of things. I tried, you know, meditating um, back then. I um, I tried uh, various relaxation procedures and deep breathing exercises and, and you know, changing my diet and exercising. And, and most of that stuff didn't help all that much. I mean, it may have helped a little bit. It may have helped for a little while, but the stress kept coming back. The emotions 
kept coming back and relationship problems kept happening. And uh, I can I tell you, things got so bad in medical school after my second year. I mean, I just threw in the towel and said, I got to get some help. And, and I went into therapy. And um, unfortunately, I, I got uh, uh, hooked up with a very, very good therapist. And I continued in therapy all through medical school and my three years of medical residency and even my first year or two in practice. I would go to these weekly sessions. And, and overall, they helped. I mean, obviously, I got through medical school. I got through, uh, graduated, and, and, and I was feeling a little bit better. But I still had all these problems. I still had the emotional problems. I still had the relationship problems. Um, I still was feeling frustrated that I couldn't get rid of these things. And uh, um, so uh, unlike most of my other um, physician colleagues at the time, young physicians, um, I decided to go and, and take some additional courses and do some self-awareness trainings. And this a lot of stuff was available in the 70s that I participated in. And I started learning a lot of really cool stuff about psychology, human psychology, and about uh, communication and relationships you know, stuff that was never really taught in medical school. That n- that nobody had ever yeah. taught. And uh, so I was really expanding my uh, consciousness. I was expanding my uh, doing personal growth type stuff. None of it was really focused on stress per se, but I was just learning more about things that I didn't know about. And, and I was getting new insights. And, and, uh, and then at, at, at a certain point, a solution appeared to me. And it wasn't a solution that happened overnight, but it, there was a huge breakthrough in my thinking that occurred around stress. Uh, really as a result of having all the stimulation and all these new ideas and new insights. But there was a point where I had a particular thought. I remember it was a particular thought that opened up a whole new avenue for me. And that that one thought, if I had, if I had ignored that thought, I <laughs> probably my life would have been completely different. <laughs> and the fact yeah. that I didn't ignore it, it was a crazy thought, but the fact that I didn't ignore it and I actually followed it and pursued it what led me to this, this transformation around stress that was life changing for me uh, in my own personal life and also led me to where I am today, where I'm able to do things and help people in ways that a lot of other folks can't. So it, it, it it was a very specific thought, and I assume you'd like to know what that thought is. Absolutely. <laughs> so I made a slide that has it. But <laughs> You're not going to show it to us? Or I'm going to show it to you. Here, here it is. <laughs> so here was the thought, and it occurred to me one day, what if none of what we've been, or nothing about what we've been told about stress is actually true? I mean, what if it's all false? What if it's all misguided? What if all these people who've been trying to help us deal with stress have written all these books and, you know, and, and all the things that are being preached by so-called stress? Ed, what if at the bottom of it all is based on a bunch of falsehoods about what about human stress? And people have not recognized that yet. Now, I got to tell you, when I had this thought, I said it was a crazy thought because you got to understand I was a science. I was a scientist. I was a, a science major in college. I was a scientifically oriented physician. I knew there was a lot of science about stress. So I'm thinking to myself, who am I to think, you know, in this way, even, even consider the possibility that what everybody's saying about stress isn't true. But that's what, that's the thought that I had, and I was willing to pursue it. And so I really spent another couple years from that point uh, trying to find out if this was correct or not, and if there were things about stress that were inaccurate. Um, and I spent a good two years and probably about $200,000 of my own funds uh, taking courses, doing workshops, uh, associating with some really leading edge thinkers uh, who I targeted. I zeroed in on ones that I thought could really help uh, give me some insights into stress. And sure enough, um, eventually I discovered that it, it was true, that much of what I was taught about stress in medical school, much of what I was reading about it in books and magazine articles, isn't the real truth about stress. So systematically, I started to realize that there was an issue when I look back on why I had been unsuccessful at dealing with stress. And the thing that I realized that I didn't, wasn't aware of for the first 30 years of my life was that I had been given a system for understanding and dealing with stress that had been implanted in my brain um, and 
it was full of misconceptions and misunderstandings and a lot of errors were in that system. But I didn't even know I had a system, much less, you know, what it consisted of and whether it was accurate or not. But I know every time I was stressed, every time I was anxious, for example, I, you know, I had tremendous fear of public speaking. When I was in medical school, if I even raised my hand in class to answer a question that I damn well knew the answer to, I was petrified. You know, just having this, the spotlight shine on me and having to open my mouth and speak. I mean, sometimes I could hardly get the words out, even though, you know, I had the right answer. So, I mean, I was just paralyzed with fear about public speaking. And I had no idea where, you know, when I tried to deal with it, I had no idea that I was referencing this system that had lots of errors and misconceptions in it and really never led me to find a solution until I started correcting things in the system. So, so that was the big breakthrough is, is eventually realizing that, uh, and by the way, that system is the same system most of you on this call probably have today that has been given to us through our society and through our education uh, process. And it's, it's, got a lot of, uh, it's got a lot of flaws in it. So I, I think one of the most important things, and this is the, th one of the three things that I told you in the beginning I wanted to focus on, what is it that's really holding you back today just like it was holding me back 30 years ago from having tremendous breakthroughs in the area of being able to deal with all kinds of different stress in your life is the fact that you've got this system too. And it's been embedded in you. It's been conditioned in you and it's full of holes. It's full of uh, outdated concepts um, of, uh, that are, and that's the reason why you haven't been able to eliminate a lot of this, these stressful problems. Um, it's not that there's anything wrong with you or there's anything incapable uh, within you of being able to do it. I, I, I was the same person I was for those first 30 years in a sense. I had the same abilities, natural ability. I just didn't realize I had this antiquated system that was holding me back. Once I flipped that system and changed it and, and fixed a lot of the mistakes that were in it, suddenly, you know, I was able to deal with anxiety. I was able to cure myself of public speaking fear. Um, I was able to uh, stop having all these relationship failures. I was able to stop being angry. All this kind of stuff started to flow immediately once I corrected a lot of the misconceptions that were part of the basic system that we all sort of get uh, conditioned to have. So this is just sort of like a graphic, you know, representation of what I mean by a system. It's it's a system that our system that we've been given is built around stress management. It's what we're sort of taught. It's what we're encouraged to uh, to to think about the best way to deal with stress is to manage it. If you, actually the best way to deal with it is to avoid it. If you can't avoid it, then the best thing to do is to manage it. So we've all been told about the benefits of meditation and relaxation and yoga and various stress management techniques. And again, they're all very, they all have lots of benefits. They're all probably a lot better than using drugs or alcohol or, you know, any kind of illegal substances, which a lot of people unfortunately use to, to deal with their stress. They're healthier, they're health promoting. Um, they're all good in that sense. But what we don't, what we don't understand is along with that advice, that mindset of managing stress, come a whole bunch of other assumptions and beliefs that sort of never get talked about, but are in the background of our thinking. And that's where the flaws are. That's where a lot of the misunderstanding is. So for example, we have ideas about what it means to be human. We have a, sort of a blueprint of what it means to be human. And we're talking, we're talking about stress as a human phenomenon and we're human beings. So when we get stressed or we try to deal with anxiety or anger or relationship problems or stress at work, uh, we're referencing our, whether we know it or not, consciously or unconsciously, mostly unconsciously, we're referencing our, our assumptions about what it means to be, be a human being. And what I found out that was very interesting is a lot of what I was taught, including in medical school, about being a human being was not correct. Um, <laughs> so, can, so just pulling that up really quickly, so what do you think is the biggest misconception people have about being a human being? Uh, well, the whole, the whole mind, you know, actually the whole mind-body model of human mm. beings is not accurate. There really is no, there's, there's no division of mind and body. Mm. You know, that we, we think things, certain things, people think that stress is a mental, is a psychological problem. It's not a psychological problem. It's a body, it's, it's a problem with our bodies. And, and we get conditioned in certain ways and, and, and certain beliefs and thoughts and 
theories get, get programmed into our bodies, and then our bodies react automatically uh, when we get triggered uh, by certain events. And we, we have no awareness of what's being triggered within us. We just walk around, we feel things, and our physiology gets stimulated, but uh, we're, we're not aware of the specific, tr what's, what's going on inside our bodies that we can't see very well. And there are, very, there are other aspects about language uh, and, and biology, and there's a whole new um, way of understanding human beings called biolinguistics, uh, which I talk about in the, um, in the ultimate um, uh, system for uh, ultimate stress relief system home study course. There's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff about being human that when you get that straightened out, you start to understand human stress in a much better, more accurate way. And then there's all the beliefs we have about stress, some of which I'm going to show you just in a few minutes are faulty. And we've all been carrying them around. We've all been thinking about stress in these ways. And that's not what stress really is. Yet, yeah. yet that's the faulty blueprint we've had. So again, when we, we go to deal with our stressful problems in life, we, we reference these blueprints that are in the background. And then we have ideas about what causes our stress to occur. And mostly we've been taught to focus on external causes. Uh, which clearly are there, and they're very obvious. Um, everybody sees them, everybody points to them, but that's not the whole story. There are other causes that we're not being taught to focus on, and if you don't have those other causes in your system, if you don't know what they are, then your system's going to be incomplete and faulty, and you're only going to be working with half the puzzle pieces when you're trying to solve these problems, which is why a lot of times we're not successful because we've got this system with a lot of holes in it. And then we also have tools and strategies all, every, all these pieces all fit together and they all um, support each other and are consistent with each other. And if you dig deeply into some of them, as I did over that several year period, you start to see there's a lot of misunderstandings. And when you correct those misunderstandings and create a kind of a new foundation for a new system, you, what happened for me was I, without even doing anything, my anxiety started to disappear. Without even doing anything, I started to become less angry. Um, my relationship yeah. started to improve because I had this whole new foundation of understanding what was going on. And then I was able, well, the other thing was I was able to take this system and consciously apply it to specific problems. So, for example, I had this fear of public speaking. And I said, okay, I'm, now that I have this system and I see how valuable and powerful it is, I'm going to use this system and I'm going to use it to cure my public speaking fear. And I did that. Uh, I set out, you know, to use myself as an experiment to see if right. it was one of the first tests of the system that I did to see if it actually held water. And, and within about six months, I was able to totally cure myself of pub public speaking. I speak in public now. I love it. I actually feel better when I'm speaking in public than when I'm by myself. <laughs> when I'm sitting down by myself. <laughs> How does your wife feel about that? <laughs> she loves it. She's a public speaker, too. <laughs> okay, good, good. Just checking. Yeah. Um, but it's funny. I mean, I actually, I, I, I'm basically a quiet guy. Uh, you wouldn't know it from this webinar. But, um, but when I get out in front of a group of people, I just sort of like wake, I sort of like come alive, and I just get energized, and I'm just feeling as comfortable as I could be. And I, I'm just having a ball, you know, sharing ideas with people and interacting with people. And I used to just, I would cringe in fear, even at the thought of having to give a, a speech in front of people. So, but the point is that I had this system and it's an, ex, and I could use it for any stressful problem in life once I had it built and once I knew how to use it uh, and knew the components inside and out. It, it, it's an incredibly powerful system. And like I said, I've been using this every day of my life for 30 years. And it's, it's rarely let me yeah. down. It's and any kind of problem, you know, there's lots of problems that come up that are recurrent problems. And there's some that are just really like come out of the blue that are unexpected, unanticipated, stressful events and things. And whenever those, any of those things happened during the last 30 years, man, I was really, I was so glad that I had this system in place because I was able to make sense of it quickly, understand it quickly and deal with it quickly. So let me, so this is the system that I have now. This is the one that I built 30 years ago, and it has all the same pieces. It's just that the components and the beliefs and the assumptions um, are very different, and uh, different ideas about being human, different ideas about what stress is, which I'll share a few of them in just a minute. Instead of trying to manage stress, I want to eliminate stress. So, for example, if, I'm, if you're struggling with anxiety or you're struggling with anger, do you really want to manage those problems, or would you rather... Just be the kind of person who doesn't get angry all the time and doesn't get anxious all the time. 
I would rather do that than spend, yeah. the, rest of my, spend the rest of my life trying to figure out how to manage those symptoms. Um, and, and the same thing, if you're having relationship problems or stress at work, wouldn't you rather be the kind of person that gets along well with other people and, and, and has lots of fun and joy and, and enthusiasm about going to work every day? That's what I'd rather do. I don't want to manage those problems. I, I want to eliminate them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so sounds I, good. So I can be a different kind of person. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> Tell us more. And, and again, you, so uh, the internal cause, you have to really focus on the internal causes. That's a big piece of the system. So, um, so now I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you a couple parts of the system, three or four parts of the system. And there's many, many parts to it, but you'll see how powerful it is. If, what you'll get out of just these three parts or four parts. And there's, you know, a whole bunch more that go along with it. But um, is there anything you wanted to talk about before I, I go into that? No, I think this is, I think you're doing great. More love hearing this and um, please continue. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to show you three pieces of the, of the system. And basically what I'm going to do with you here right now is it's, this is going to be like you're in the home study course. And we're going to be building, and what we do in that course is we build a new foundation for you to understand stress as a human phenomenon. So uh, I'm going to give you like the first couple lessons of the, of the program. We'll do it right here live. And Great. it'll be, like, be Great. like you're in the Thank course. Thank you. So yeah. first thing we tackle is what is stress? It's actually not the first thing we tackle, but it's the second thing we tackle. But uh, <laughs> once, once we understand what a human being is, <laughs> yeah. then we move on to what, what, what is stress. So um, let me set the stage for this. So if you've read anything or heard anything about stress before, any book, anything, uh, everybody starts off with defining, you know, giving you a definition of stress. And I'm sure you've heard definitions out the wazoo. You know, they always talk about the fight or flight response. Um, they talk about sort of in, you know, interpreting events as threats and stimulating your physiology. You know, there's all kinds of scientific definitions and psychological definitions and psychophysiologic definitions. And there, there's a bunch of them that are, that are popular. Um, the only problem with those definitions is none of them actually get at what stress really is. They're, they're all misleading. They don't really tell you what stress is at, at its heart, what, as a human phenomenon, what it is, right? And so that's the first thing we need to clarify. In our, we need to get rid of the old ideas we have in our old system and replace it with a better way of thinking about what stress really is. And this is, again, this is that simple change I told you about. You can make right here tonight. I'm going to show you how to think about stress differently right now. And if you do that, uh, it'll, ha it'll change the way you think about stress and hopefully deal with it forevermore, permanently. Yeah. yeah. And I'll show you what I mean. So what is the truth about stress? The truth about stress, believe it or not, is it's just a word. <laughs> it's not a thing. It's not a condition. It's, it's actually not something human beings can suffer from. We never suffer from stress. And you can never deal with stress. You know, everybody's running around today saying, well, how can I deal with my stress? You can't. You, it's, a, it's, a, it's a buzzword. It's a, it's yeah. a concept. You know, it, it was, it's a word that was introduced into our language in the 1920s by Hans Selye, who's the you know, credit as being the father of modern stress research. You know, prior to 1920, there was no such thing as stress. You know? So I just wanted to jump in here. This whole concept of that was something that when I first heard Mort talk about it, I was very resistant to believing that. I was like, no, people are stressed. They're screaming. There's road rage. There's oh, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm not and denying that. I'm not denying that. It, it, took me, it took me a while to get over and go, oh, my God, you're right. It's just a word. It's not an actual thing. Well, people so had all those is, things. It, it, prior to 1920, people were having anxiety attacks. They were having anger episodes. They were having relationship problems. They had all that stuff. They just uh, didn't, and, and they had a lot of physiologic problems too. You know, they had high blood yeah. pressure. They had, uh, you know, uh, heart disease. They had all kinds of stuff. All right, and they just didn't have this word stress to to put a label on it. You know, so and in fact, if if Selye in the first book that he wrote uh, for the public, after doing all this research on animals and detailing all the physiologic responses that he was one of the first to discover. Right in the early part of his book, he, he warns people. He says, now, don't make the mistake of thinking that stress is something that 
exist. It's, it's just an abstraction. I needed, I had to make up a word. It's an abstraction. To, okay. I had to make up a word to, to, because I was going to talk to other scientists and we were going to share research and, and develop this thing. We needed a word. <laughs> so I invented yeah. one. It, it's yeah. not a real thing. You know, don't make the mistake. Of course, nobody paid attention to them. Uh, so yeah. we've been walk, walking around like, so again, it's not denying that there's sure physiologic problems um, that are real. Uh, the people get tense, they get irritable, and all that kind of stuff. But we never really suffer from stress. Whenever we think we're suffering from stress, we're not. We're suffering from something else. So what is that something else that's real? It's not just a word. And the answer is, stress is a word that stands for problems. Lots of problems. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of specific problems. We use the same general term stress to refer to. So you can be having anxiety attacks and call that stress. You can be having anger episodes and call that stress. You can have road rage and call that stress. You can have financial um, problems and worries and call that stress. You can be about to lose your job and call that stress. You can have an illness, you know, that's, that's stressful for you now that you have to deal with or a family member can get sick and you can call that stress. Uh, a child can become addicted to drugs. Um, or a friend can come addicted to drugs, you can call that stress. You can call these problems stress. And in fact, we do. So if you're talking to another person and they say, oh boy, I'm stressed today, you have no friggin' idea what, which problems they're referring to. <laughs> yeah. the same thing which when, problem is it today? Yeah. When you say to yourself, I'm stressed today. Well, what do you mean? Tell me more. You know, what do you, forget this word stress. So, so the one simple change that I'm going to ask you to make starting right now is whenever you hear that word stress from now on, either coming out of your own mouth or in your own head, or somebody else is telling you they're stressed, substitute the word problems and see the difference that that makes. Because the minute you do that, number one, you're telling the truth about what it really is. And number two, it begs the question, well, okay, well, what are the problems I'm having? Hmm, I guess I haven't really focused on that. You know, what I've done is I've lumped them all together. I've lumped all my problems together, put them in a, you know, in, in, in a compartment and put this label stress on them. Well, I don't have any definition or clarity now about what the specific problems are I'm dealing with. Maybe you do intuitively have some clarity, but it, you really want to find out what the specific problems are you're dealing with. And usually when we're under stress, we have a lot of problems or a number of problems, not just, but you could have one big one. Um, but a lot of times we have multiple problems, but it's important to know what those problems are individually and specifically um, if you're going to deal with them in the most effective way. And if you're going to make that type of stress, you know, um, uh, disappear or eliminate it from your life. So that's, it's really, it's funny. It's really like, you know, what's that a picture of? Beautiful sunrise, right? Yeah. Yeah. Light yeah. at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> And, and we all so, go around. We all go around talking about, oh, what a beautiful sunrise! And isn't a wonderful sunrise? And if we're on vacation, we love to sit and watch the sunrise. Well, guess what? The sun doesn't rise. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a fabrication. Um, the Earth is actually rotating. But as human beings, we have language, and we can get together and we can make up a story, and we can say, oh, the sun is rising. Isn't that nice? And then we can pretend it's like a real thing, when when it's not. And this is the same thing, you know, you can make up the story called stress and say, oh, I'm having stress. And no, you're not. You're having problems. The, the earth is rotating. <laughs> the sun is not rising. Right, right. right. <laughs> and that's the first key point that uh, in a new system, and, and, you know, in a better system for stress, if you understand, get grounded in the fact that stress is just a word that stands for problems. Yeah. And, and let me give you an example. I want to give you an example of like the, the person, the, the one person that I work with in my career who was the least likely to succeed in eliminating stress. This was a guy that everybody had given up on. His name was Jim. His name really wasn't Jim, but I'm you know, to protect his, his uh, privacy. Um, we'll call him Jim. And, but he was a real person that came to me um, for, for, co for counseling. And he had been written off. I mean, he had had, this was a guy who was like in his mid, mid forties. He was married, had two kids, had a business. Um, it was a landscape, a landscaping business. And he had had a 20 year history of chronic stress, chronic headaches, indigestion, diarrhea, muscle tension, anger outbursts, relationship conflicts, the whole nine yards. And it would, it would ebb and flow depending upon what was going on in his life. 
And sometimes it would get worse, sometimes it would get better. And this particular time he came to see me, his business had actually expanded. I mean, all of a sudden he got all these new clients and he had to, he had to hire new people and get new crews and train. I mean, his life was just, uh, he was suc being successful, but he was stressed out to the max. And he had tried all this stuff, self-help stuff, like I had tried, didn't help. Um, so he decides to go to a, in town in Baltimore here, he decides to go to a stress management psychologist and he, a very prominent psychologist in our area, he worked with his stress management psychologist for three months, I think it was. And the, uh, came in one day and the psychologist said, you know, I don't think I'm really helping you here. I don't think you're, you're, you're getting any better. Um, I, I think you need to see a psychiatrist and, and I have somebody in mind and, um, I, I'm, you know, I'm giving you this referral. I think you ought to go see him. Now, that's not what he wanted to hear, but he respected this guy's opinion and he wasn't getting better. So he took the advice. He went to see the psychiatrist for the first visit, went back for a second visit to the psychiatrist. At the end of the second visit, the psychiatrist kicks him out and says, you know, I don't really think you have what it takes to do well in psychotherapy. I think you ought to go back and keep working with the, you know, stress management guy because you just don't have what it takes. And, you know, so he was like at his wits end and, and, you know, like all the options were gone. And then fortunately he had a friend uh, who knew about my work and he said, well, why don't you go see this Dr. Orman guy who, um, you know, does this some amazing stuff with stress. And of course he said, well, I, I've kind of like exhausted all my other options. Why not? So he came to see me. He wasn't very optimistic. Um, but when I heard his story, when he sat down the first day and he told me his story about why, you know, Everybody had told him he really can't get better and he's probably, he didn't know why he's there because he's probably not going to get better. And I knew exactly what the problem was. I knew, number one, I knew that he absolutely did have the ability to eliminate most of his stress, but he didn't know it. And I also knew that both of the two mental health professionals that he had seen were steeped in the same system that I had been taught in medical school, you know, and that, uh, it was a crazy system. And so no wonder they couldn't help him and no wonder he wasn't getting better. So, uh, so I worked with this guy and I tell you, and, and I, and I taught him my new system and within six weeks of working with this guy, once a week for six weeks, he started seeing improvement in his stress levels that he had never had in 20 years. It was unbelievable. And I continued working with this guy for a little more than a year. And within a couple months, he had, he had eliminated 50% of his stress. And um, I actually followed up with him many years later after we stopped working together. He has continued to do very well. He has this new system in place. He understands things better. He understands things differently. He's got a whole new way of dealing with issues that he wasn't able to deal with successfully before. And it was a complete turnaround. And he was a poster child for who you would least likely <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a that's a stunning stunning shift there yeah yeah so what does this mean for you if he could do that and all these people had written him off and he had written himself off you know uh, what does it mean for whatever kind of stress issues you may be struggling with that you may have come to the conclusion you know i don't think i could really truly get rid of these things you know the best i can do is manage them or put up with them and keep them from you know doing me any major harm if i can yeah. You know, and, and what would your life be like if you if you always remembered that stress was just a word like i said it would force you into a different path it would force you into instead of asking the question how can i deal with my stress you would start saying okay what are the problems i'm having and how can i deal with those problems and you'll start asking more problem focused questions so you know you'll go down a completely different fork in the road when you make that little mental shift of you know of understanding what stress is um, and also um, of the next point we're going to talk about, which is stress management. So the second part of your new system is all about value of stress management. And again, I, I'm not saying there's not value in stress management. I'm just saying if you want to eliminate stress, it's not a great system. Um, it, it's not a great approach. And again, the reason I say that is because with the exception of a few stress management techniques, meditation, certain types of meditation being one of them, um, as we talked about earlier, um, uh, the vast majority of stress management techniques basically are dealing with just the symptoms of our problems. Um, they're, uh, they're much better than dealing with our symptoms by using alcohol or drugs or overeating or 
you know, using chemical solution. They're much healthier. Um, but, it, but in a sense, they're similar in that they still only deal with symptoms. And, right, right. and that's why I say it's, it's, it's stress management is for losers because you know that if you only deal with the symptoms of your problems, you're not going to win. You're, you're not going to eliminate those problems. You're going to keep having to manage them over and over again because you're only treating symptoms. And, and that's the choice point that we have now. Do you want to continue to deal with symptoms or do you want to learn how to deal with causes? And again, in the, symptom, in the system that we've been given, we've all been brainwashed to, as I mentioned before, take all of our problems and throw them in a basket <laughs> and yeah. call that basket stress and then ask ourselves, how can we deal with our stress? So if all you want to do is deal with symptoms, that's perfectly fine. That'll work. Okay. Put all your problems, don't worry about what the individual problems are. Put them all in a basket, call it stress, and then say, okay, how can I deal with my stress? I can use alcohol, I can use drugs, I can use relaxation techniques, I can use meditation, yoga, tai chi. I can do things to reduce my, system, my symptoms, which is fine, okay, if that's what you want to do. But if you want to get at causes, you got to start taking those problems out of the basket one by one. And you got to identify them specifically, and then you got you to get at the causes for each problem. So. We all know that when you only attack symptoms, your stress keeps happening. Your problems right. rarely get solved. Um, sometimes you can create new problems. So if you're using alcohol or drugs or things like that, you, you have addictions and other kinds of accidents and other kinds of things that can happen. Uh, even stress management techniques. Now you have a new problem. Now you have a new part-time job. You know, you got to figure out how to do all the stress management stuff and you're busy and you're stressed and now you got a whole new set of stress, <laughs> you know, kind of stuff. Um, and you basically, it's not a good system for eliminating these problems. And this is what I, this is what I base my system around, not strip managing stress, but I consider the ultimate method for dealing with stress is getting down to your problems, analyzing each problem individually, getting at the causes and, and solving them at the level of causes. That's people have been solving problems in life. Human beings have been solving our problems in life for thousands of years by using this system. We've just been brainwashed that it's not the way to go when it deals, when you, you know, you're dealing with stressful problems in life, but it turns out it is. And there are ways you can learn how to do this. So again, this, I taught Jim my system. And one of the things that he realized very early on that, that helped him, you know, embrace it and, and benefit from it was like, he went, holy cow, I've been so wrong about all these things that I was taught to believe about stress. And what, from what it was to, you know, where it was coming from in my life, you know, what to do about it. Um, and he had to really grapple with the fact that he had been given a system that had a lot of, you know, misunderstandings in it. And it made him wrong about a lot of things. And he had to be willing to, he had to, be willing to admit that and to be willing to be open, you know, to new ways of looking at things, which he was. And he, he benefited, you know, greatly from it. So, again, what does this mean for you? Well, it means you... There, there are a lot of things that you could do right now that you probably don't know that you could do. But what it's going to take is you'd have to be willing to be wrong about a lot of things you were taught. Um, and a lot of people aren't willing to be wrong. I was um, just going to say, what's the, <laughs> what's the best technique for getting people over that resistance? Like, Oh my God. Like even your example about the sunrise, it, the sun doesn't actually rise. It no. is the earth shifting. <laughs> I'd love to take pictures of the sunrise and I'd hate to call it, oh, here's my picture of the earth moving. No, it's yeah. fine. It's fine you call it the sunrise as long as you understand that's what you're doing. You know? It's yeah. fine to use the word stress as long as you know it's, it, it's, a, it's a buzzword and it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's just a word for problems. You can, as long as you make that little you know, connection in your mind, a little extra connection, uh, it's fine you know, to, 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 keep, to keep using it. I mean, I, I, I'm fond of saying I wish I could wave a magic wand and eliminate the word stress from the human vocabulary. <laughs> We're obviously not going to do that. Um, so you got to do that little work yourself, that little piece yourself. Yeah. So again, how would your life change if you stopped attacking the symptoms and started attacking the root causes of stress? And this leads me to the third piece of the puzzle or the third part of the new system <clears throat> that I hope you would take away from this webinar. This is, again, the, old, the fork in the road on attacking symptoms versus causes. Um, but the third part of the system is how do you attack causes? And here again, as I mentioned earlier, we've been given some bad information uh, and we've been taught to think in ways 
that don't help us understand the causes of our stressful problems in life. And mostly we've been taught to focus on the external causes and we, we are missing half the puzzle pieces. Right. So what you really need to do and what the bulk of my uh, approach in teaching people and the, what the ultimate system, um, ultimate stress relief system home study course does is it really expands your skill set of understanding um, what I call the hidden causes of stress. So when it comes to understanding the causes of anxiety, anger, frustration, relationship problems, public speaking fear, you know, financial issues, stress at work, all that stuff, what you see, what's obvious is not all there is. There are a whole bunch of other causes that are going on uh, that are invisible. And in order to learn about these, and in order to be able to deal with these effectively, again, you have to be willing to think differently than we've been conditioned to think. You have to be willing to recognize that there's something wrong with this model that only looks at the external causes and says, that's it. That's, that's where your stress is coming from. Because by the way, you can't do much about a lot of those external causes. But when you start to notice what the internal causes are, you're, you're in pretty much control of your internal causes, or at least you can take control of them. But, you, but in order to, to get that awareness, in order to understand what these things are, you have to break from the pack. You have to, you have to be willing you know, to think differently, to understand things differently, and to, and to gain new knowledge and new, a new skill set that comes in very handy once you have it. So it's really the, the difference between internal and external causes where a lot of this ability to eliminate stress uh, boils down to. And the better you are at identifying internal causes. So like I say, when I, when I said to you that I cured my public speaking fear like by taking yeah, that system, right. that's how I did it. I said, okay, what am I doing? What are the internal causes that are going on inside me, consciously or unconsciously, that's causing this in, unnecessary fear of public speaking? And, and that was the question I started with. And then I had to actually dig around and try and figure it out and actually come up with the specific internal causes. I had specific beliefs about public speaking, about the audience, about what it means to be a public speaker, about how to prepare for a talk, about how to deliver a talk about what the purpose of delivering a talk, of talking to other people you know, is. And they were all caca. Yeah. They were all caca. Yeah. <laughs> and, but I hadn't really taken them into account. I hadn't observed them. I hadn't recognized they were in the background of my thinking. Uh, there was perfect, a lot of perfectionistic expectations of how you give a talk. There was all kinds of crap in there that, that yeah. I never explored. But once I was on that path, I said, okay, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to find out what these internal causes are. Once I saw them, number one, I could realize how foolish they were and how, how inappropriate and, and not uh, uh, connected to reality they were. And then I could make the corrections that I needed to make. And again, it didn't happen overnight, but that, that gave me the avenue, opened up the door that enabled me to do that. So um, why is my thing not working here? Okay, so these internal causes are entirely within us, they're, and because they're within us, they're not easy to see. Okay, where did that go? Something's happening to my thing here. Oh. <laughs> I jumped way ahead. So I apologize. I don't know how that happened. One second. Huh. This is strange. Where did it go? Uh, let's see. There okay. it is. So how, would, so how would it be different if you could pinpoint the internal causes of many different types of stress in your life? I mean, I just gave you one example, public speaking fear. But I did this for relationships, you know, relationship trouble I was having. I did this for my, my anxiety, a lot of my other anxiety problems, a lot of other problems I was having. Um, it really helps to be able to do that. So again, this is the third fork in the road. We can either stay blind to the internal causes or we can find out what the hell they are and, and learn how to deal with them. And the benefits are many. So when you do that, when you're able to do that, you'll have less emotional stress, fewer relationship conflicts and failures, better health because your stress levels overall will be lower, more contentment and inner peace and confidence, and even more wealth and success because you'll, you won't be creating a lot of problems that get in your way and, 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 um, one of the big things that happens for us when we're stressed is 
we don't move on opportunities that come our way because we know we're already sort of overwhelmed and overstressed and like we're not going to move on something because it's just going to make us more stressed out to add one more project or one more opportunity. And so we pass up on a lot of things that could be to our benefit. And by the same token, if I can get these slides to move, um, by not learning about these internal causes, we, we pretty much will remain stressed uh, for the most part, and it can affect our family lives and can affect our health and, again, the missed opportunities, and it can limit our success. So, again, this is the kind of system I think you want to have. You want to be able to have tools and insights, not just about being human and about stress, but specifically about internal causes of various different types of problems. And in the, in the home study course I've designed, I, I really – give people a lot of training to recognize all these things and also tools and strategies for how to deal with them. And I'm going to share one of those with you right now. Once again, we skipped over some slides here. Huh. That's all right. Let's just keep going. Yeah. I mean, I can do it without this. Don't want to stress anyone out over this. No, I'm, not, you know, I'm <laughs> using my system right now, by the way. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Although I don't know where these slides went. Anyhow, so let me go back to Jim. So one of the, one of the issues that Jim had was an anger issue, and, uh, among many that he had. Um, maybe it was before these slides. This is weird. Anyhow, so he had an anger issue. And one of the, uh, remember I said I was going to give you a tool at the end of the presentation. Yeah, so the, exactly. the, tool is, uh, the tool is it's, a, um, it's from the system, and it shows you the internal causes of anger in human beings. And basically most of the internal causes that I'm talking about here that are invisible are thought patterns and behavior patterns that sort of are automatically triggered in our, in our bodies. The ways of thinking, their opinions, beliefs, uh, attitudes that we've been given, or patterns of behaving or even not behaving. I mean, there's a lot of times there are things that we don't do that contribute to us having problems, stressful problems in life that we could have avoided. So um, you can take any emotion, any negative emotion, and you can actually pinpoint the specific internal causes, the conversations or the thought patterns and the behavior patterns. Uh, that are driving that emotion. So what I did with Jim, one of the things I did with Jim is I taught him how to understand the internal causes of human anger. This, again, is another piece of that understanding human beings, understanding human emotions, how they work, how they get caused, what causes them. And a, a very good way to think about human emotions is actually to use a model of a computer um, to, to illustrate the point I'm, I'm going to make in a second here. So if you can imagine sitting in front of your computer and you press the letter A on your keyboard and the letter A appears on your screen, that's something right. you normally expect to happen. Yes? Yep, exactly. If I asked you what caused that to happen, what caused the letter A to appear on your screen, you, most people would say, well, obviously I pushed the A key and that's what caused it. That's what we see. We see pushing the A key. We see A appear on the screen. That looks like it's a one-to-one -one cause effect relationship. Unfortunately, it's not. There's other things going on that are invisible that we're not seeing, but they have to be there. And that they have to, there's a program that has to be running in the back of that computer for you to hit that A key and for the pixels to line up on the screen in the configuration of the letter A. Right. And if that program isn't there, you can hit that key all you want. You, you're never going to get the letter A to appear on the screen. And that's not a random program. It's a, a computer programmer had to use very specific language <coughs> to get that to appear on the screen. And they know how to do it. We don't know how to do it. It doesn't matter to us. All we care about is I press the A key and I get the A on the screen. But somebody who builds computers and software has to know what that language is. Well, our emotions function in much the same way. It's like we're biologic computers in a sense. Somebody pushes our A key or our anger key. We right. see what they do. They say something. They do something. They treat us badly. They, you know, insult us. They uh, demean us. They, um, they harm us. They do something. They, they and, and our anger appears in our body. 
you know, we put this one to one, <laughs> do this one to one cause effect relationship thing. You know, oh, that's what caused my anger. You, you, you did this or you said this. Yeah, that's only half the story, though. Um, there was a program that got triggered in you, a specific sequence of thoughts that had to be there for you to get angry. And unless you know what those thoughts are precisely, okay, uh, you, you, you can't really step in and intervene most of the time. But when, on the other hand, when you know the mechanism of anger, and we do, I go through this for anger and for a number of other emotions in the course, but so basically here's how anger works for human beings. I had a slide that showed this to you, but it's obviously not here. <laughs> or it's invisible. It's, right. it's invisible. Yeah. It's invisible. Yeah, another invisible <laughs> program. To... There's a slide in here <laughs> that's gonna, that I'm going to be talking from right now, um, even though you can't see it. Uh, so here's how we have to be thinking in order to uh, get angry. So first, you have to uh, assume that somebody did something bad or wrong, something they shouldn't have done. We rarely get angry when we think somebody did something wonderful or terrific, okay? It's usually bad or wrong or not what they shouldn't have done. The second thought we have to have is that somebody else was hurt or harmed or inconvenienced or negatively impacted by the, the wrong thing that was done. So once again, even if somebody does something bad or wrong but nobody's harmed or, or put out in any way, uh, you might not like it, but we usually don't get really exercise to be angry about it, unless both of those things, uh, we look at it in both of those ways. And then the third important component of anger is um, that the person who did those two things, you know, did something bad and wrong, hurt or harmed somebody or negatively impact somebody, was usually 100% responsible, what I call unilaterally responsible or to blame for whatever happened. In other words, we didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, they did it. They did the bad, wrong thing. They hurt somebody. We observed it, but we didn't have anything to do with it. Okay? And now we're pissed. All right? Yeah. And that's the program. And, and there's a different program for guilt. There's a different program for anxiety. There's a different program for, uh, for worry. Um, there's a different program for sadness. But they're very specific thoughts like that. And you have to be, not only do you have to be thinking in that, those ways, but internally in your body, you have to be convinced that those things are absolutely true. Your emotion yeah. comes from the automatic assumption of those thoughts and the, the second assumption that those thoughts are 100% true. Right, right. And what's very interesting is once you have a window into what's going on and you can see that you know the mechanism and you know why you're feeling angry and you know the specific thoughts and then you start questioning those thoughts, did somebody really do something bad and wrong? Did somebody really hurt or harm somebody else? Were they really 100% uh, responsible? In other words, did I not have anything to do with it? Um, you find out that a lot of times, the one or more of those automatic assumptions is not true. So you would be amazed at how many times we get angry when, because we've misperceived reality or we've made an assumption that turns out not to be valid. But we never get to fix it. We never get to correct it because we have no idea what the hell assumptions we made and, and why we're feeling the way we're feeling. And when you get the ability, and that's why I say, when you have a system that gives you the ability to know beyond a shadow of a doubt exactly why you're feeling angry or anxious or guilty or frustrated or worried or, or sad, and you know exactly where it's coming from, you can step in and you can actually look at those thoughts and look at those perceptions and say, you know, is this true? And, and let me tell you something. If you do that with anger and you find one of yeah. those things, one of those things that isn't true, guess what happens to your anger? Disapp yeah, it'd be pretty hard to hang on to that. It disappears immediately. Yeah. It vanishes. And, and you didn't have to punch a punching bag or, you know, run five miles or take deep breaths or do any, all you did was you corrected a misperception or a false assumption and once you see that it's false, it's like there's nothing to be angry about anymore. You know, the anger just disappears because you're now seeing things more accurately and more realistically as to what really happened. So that's the power of having this ins these insights that are all, you know, can all be included in a, in a comprehensive system with all kinds of supporting ideas and, and, and um, other tools and other types of things that, are, that can be very, very beneficial. So again, um, getting hopefully the rest of the slides will work here, but not, you know, not knowing for sure why each person showed up here um, and, and what you were trying to get out of this webinar, um, I do want to let you know that there is 
and again, it could be for multiple reasons why different people are here. Um, and you did learn a couple key things here. So you now have pieces of a new system. It's just the beginning of the new system, but now you know stress is just a word. Uh, you know that stress management deals mainly with symptoms, not causes, and there are some exceptions to that. Uh, and um, you know that the best way to deal with stress is not to manage the symptoms, but to really get at the causes, particularly the internal causes, learn how to identify them and learn how to take them on and defeat them. So this is the system that I built. This is the system that I've been using. And I have the uh, home study course called the Ultimate Stress Relief System, which is a 10-week program um, that covers all of these bases that we've been talking about. And that will actually allow you to have the same system that I have. So the obvious question, how do you learn how to do this? You can either try to do it on your own, which I don't recommend. <laughs> it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money. Or you, you learn from somebody, you know, who's already built a system. And, and usually most people have, when you talk to people who are stressed about getting rid of their stress and getting a system to eliminate it, you know, almost everybody says, oh, I'm too stressed out to do that. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. You know, uh, yeah. it would be too stressful to try to put something like that. You got to look at it as what's the cost of not doing it. You know, what what, are, what price are we going to continue to pay? What price are we going to pay down the line for putting up with a lot of stress that we don't need to put up with uh, because we have this faulty system and because we haven't done anything to correct it or to learn how to correct it? And it takes an investment. It takes an investment of time. It takes an investment of training uh, to be able to understand some of these principles and to be able to incorporate them. And you have to practice, too. You can't just, you know, just passively, you know, um, take the stuff in, you have to actually go out and try to use it uh, in your life. So that's the solution that I have is the Ultimate Stress Relief System Home Study Course. It's, uh, believe me, this course is not for everybody. As Barbara mentioned, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're not willing, you know, if you're closed-minded, you're not willing to consider the possibility, you could be wrong about a whole heck of a lot of things um, about being human and about stress and about a whole bunch of other things in life. Yeah. revealed in this course it's this is not right for you if you're if you have a lot of reluctance you know if you have reluctance to put you know a couple hours a week in it takes about three or four hours a week for 10 weeks to really assimilate most of this stuff and there's some of some repetition involved which is a part of the program um, you, if you're reluctant to do that if you're reluctant to you know make make the time then it's you know it's not worth you waste you waste your money if you do that and and there's a lot of truth telling that goes on, very deep truth telling that goes on in this course. And uh, a lot of, it turns out a lot of our stress in life comes from not telling the truth. And if you look around today and you ask yourself as a society, how good are we at telling the truth? I think you'll see very quickly. Just look at the political. <laughs> I was okay. just going to say. Well, that that's we, really uh, apropos at the moment, isn't it? We have a lot of, yes, I know. When I saw, when I saw the reaction <laughs> to the election, I said to myself, my God, I, I have 100 years worth of client, potential clients yeah. that are yeah. so confused about where their anger and, and all their upsets are coming from, have no clue whatsoever is what is going on and why they're so stressed out. Uh, yeah. or either way, you know, in, in the election, uh, I said, my God, there's like, this is amazing that people don't have this knowledge, don't have this understanding. So, and there are people who literally are allergic to the truth and they don't react very well to it. You're seeing them on display, many of them on display. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. uh, that's not to yeah. say there, there, there's not to say there aren't truth issues on both sides. All right. But you're seeing some real uh, examples uh, prominent examples of what it means to be allergic to the truth. And if you are that kind of a person, you will hate this course <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's really a lot, a lot of very deep truth telling. And that's what you need to do if you're going to be able to eliminate stress. So um, yeah. the why I built it is to really help successful people. Uh, and a lot of times we feel like we have to put up with the stress. That, that's about, that's the best we can do. We just slug through it and we just, you know, uh, champion on and, 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 and wear it as a badge of honor. But really, you can eliminate a lot of it if you just have the right understandings. And 
and, and it really helps people live better and, and have better relationships and be happier in life and feel calmer and sleep better and, 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 and protect their health. And, and certainly la- you end up laughing more. more. more you tell the truth, the more you end up laughing about what goes on in life. Um, and that's, that's sort of an enlightenment principle that, uh, that I've heard many people talk about. And it, a lot of these Zen, uh, really deep, deeply enlightened people are laughing all, all day long. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and have much more, even much more success. So it gives you, it gives you tremendous inner control and, and knowledge that most people don't have. And it really, it's a system for developing lifelong mastery over any kind of problem in life that could ever stress you out or be difficult for you to solve. It's a, it's a fantastic system. I, like I say, I've used it uh, continuously. Uh, when any new major problem comes up in my life that I wasn't expecting, I go right, I go right to this understanding to be able to get, get a handle on it. Like I say, it has 10 weeks of training deals with every aspect of this graphic here. So the first week is all about being human. The second week is all about stress. Uh, and what talks about a couple of things that we talked about on the webinar, a couple of those key points, and it goes into more depth. And then the third week is all about the ultimate method for dealing with stress and eliminating it. And then the, the other seven weeks of the course are all highly focused on helping you understand the internal causes and giving you tools and strategies for not only recognizing those causes, but how you can deal with them effectively so that you can make your stress go away without having to do relaxation procedures and other time consuming approaches. So you get a private members area, the training each week comes with videos, audios, and downloadable PDFs. I've got a bunch, Barbara was asking me how many uh, books that uh, I've written. The number of my eBooks that I've written have included as, uh, as components of the course. And one thing you should really, uh, one thing that, uh, I want to emphasize is in addition to all these wonderful things that you get, and the course itself is of tremendous value. uh, I'm also, I've also built into this course, private email coaching directly with me. So I will work with you one-on-one by email uh, during the 10 weeks you're in the course. And, and you can ask me questions or you can, you can have, you have particular issues that you want to deal with. We can deal with them. Um, if you're confused about anything or have questions about anything as you go through the course, we can do that. And it's, it's, Really, it jacks up the value of the course tremendously that you get personal one-on-one attention from me. And, um, I mean, the course itself is incredibly valuable. And it's, you know, throwing that piece in, it's well over $10,000, easily over $10,000 in value with, you know, my time and my expertise and and all the stuff that I built into the course. We're taking 30 years uh, of my experiences and kind of crystallizing it into something you can consume and actually get implanted in your brain you know, in just 10 short weeks, took me years and, and tons of money to, to do for myself. So normally if you go to my website, uh, this, uh, where, where I have this for sale, um, I sell it for 19.97. I do, when we do a webinar, um, I do usually give people a break for being willing to be on the webinar, investing their time uh, in doing that. So um, I usually uh, give people a great deal for, you know, any web- webinar that I do and I give them a $500 discount. So uh, when I do webinars like this, um, I, I sell this program for fourteen ninety seven, dollars And I think it's still a steal. When you think about the cost, you know, what's the cost of a, a divorce that you can prevent? What's the cost yeah. of a, a stroke or, or, you know, getting, you know, disabled or, uh, or having a partnership relationship blow up and, and, and how you have to unwind that and all the implications uh, or, or just your own, just your energy level and your enthusiasm and your joy in life. I mean, if you project that over years, you know, to, to take 10 weeks and to make an investment to get a system. And then when you get to system, by the way, you're, you're not going back to your old system. I guarantee it. Once you you get this whole mindset, this whole way of understanding things, you will never go back and you will always have the system available to you to uh, to use in your life every single day, just like I have for the last 30 years. It will not let you down. It's very well grounded in solid principles, and uh, it works, and, and it'll help you accomplish what you want to accomplish. But for this, since, since Barbara put this thing together specifically for her people, um, she asked me if I would could do even better uh, than what I normally do for a webinar price, so I agreed to do that for her folks on the and also for uh, my folks that have come on and joined. So anybody that's here on the webinar tonight, uh, I'm actually going to give another discount, uh, a better than great deal. So I'll knock $1,000 off the price um, for just a short period of time. Again, I have to limit this because it's, I'm making a big commitment time-wise to serve each and every person uh, with the coaching, uh, email coaching that I do. So 
Um, I can't keep this open for all that long, but I will keep it open for 72 hours if I can. Um, it'll, it'll definitely be gone Sunday, um, Sunday uh, U.S. time. I know there was some confusion <laughs> between Australia yeah. time and U.S. time. It'll yeah. be gone Sunday, and it might even be gone sooner depending on how many people um, sign up for it, depending on how many. I want to make sure I can serve the people uh, adequately that, that want to do it. So it uh, comes with 100%, you know, risk-free, stress-free, uh, guarantee. If, if for any reason you're not happy after the first 30 days, um, you're going through the first four weeks of the course. Uh, if you're not thrilled with it, you, you can get a full refund, fund, no questions asked. Just email me. And that, this email is, is given to you in the course. It's the one we would use for coaching and, and stuff like that. Um, like I said, you have to, if you want to do it and you want to take advantage of this, uh, you need to get in quickly because it's going to be gone as of Sunday. And like I say, I, I may have to take it down sooner than that, depending upon what the response is. So, uh, this is the URL that you go to, and Barbara, if you want to throw that in the chat box, uh, yeah. which I can't do at the moment. Um, that, uh, uh, and, and by the way, the um, graphic that I'm showing you here, it, in addition, it, as part of the course, you get my 14-day stress cure book, and there's a lot of training built around that, and also uh, another program that I did on overcoming negative emotions. They're all built into the course. And it's the kind of thing where, yeah, you could go out and you could buy the book and read it on your own, but you're not, you're not going to get anywhere near the training and the, the depth and the value and the, this, this really being embedded within you as something you, you use on a daily basis, usually just from reading a book. It, that's why I put this course together because there's a lot of video training. It's a lot of in-depth coaching in these CDs, which are MP3 files in, in the course that really help, uh, make this into something that translates into real value for you and real results in your life, much more so than you can get from just doing one of these programs, you know, on your, on, on its own. And, and then just quick summary. I mean, the main point I wanted to emphasize tonight is that the thing that made the biggest difference for me from the first 30 years of my life to the second 30 years was realizing that I had been given a faulty system that, that I was never aware of conscious. I never, I not only was not aware I had a system, but I had no awareness of what was inside that system and the specific beliefs and assumptions and theories that had been passed on to me uh, that people thought were correct, but were not. And that, that really, that, that really kept me from being able to deal with the problems that I was struggling with for all those years. And it, once I figured that out, once I corrected the mistakes of the system and built a better system, man, everything has been different since then. And that's something that can happen for you. It can happen for you today, um, and, and, and 10 weeks from now, you can have the same kind of system. Now, it'll take you probably some time to practice with it and then to get good at it, but um, you would have the exact same system that I have for the most part, and, and it'll only take you 10 weeks. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's fantastic, and uh, I love, I mean, to me, just the first aspect of understanding that stress, it's just a word, what people really have are problems, and um and for everyone who's here on the call, if you go to that page, you'll still be able to get that free download. You can sign up if you want. And if you do sign up, you get the free download for the PDF as well as part of um, just for attending here today. Yeah. And Mort, um, Lisa is asking, she says she's a stress mastery facilitator herself. Oh, and cool. she'd like to know if you have a train the trainer program with your program. Not yet. But one of the things I'm pointing towards uh, is putting together a certification program so that people can be trained. They actually can, can market this course themselves. They can, be, they can be trained to be the coach, like I'm being the coach for those of you who jump into this course um, tonight. I will be coaching you directly, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, they can be trained to do that coaching for people. Um, so I'm planning to put together something like that. Yeah. So would you recommend that, the, that they start with this program and work it through themselves oh, first yeah, yeah, and see yeah. how you operate and uh, absolutely. I mean, anybody, anybody that want, I don't have the the um, certification program developed yet. But one of the first requirements would be you have to go through the course yourself. I mean, you can't yeah, you can't yeah. teach the course uh, until you've mastered it yourself, and then yeah, I can show I you once you've gone through it and you've grabbed the principle. I can then give you some additional training on how to coach other people effectively and the kinds of difficulties they run into and, and where they need some additional support. So, yeah. by the way, when you go to this, uh, when you go to this URL, as Barbara mentioned, 
at the bottom of the page. It's just one a single page. You can sign up for the course. And when you sign up, you'll immediately get access to the first week's training materials right away. Um, but you also, there's a link at the bottom of that to get the anger, internal causes of anger. Remember, I only talked about the first part, the conversation piece. The, the action patterns are also on that uh, tool as well. And you'll have that to be able, you know, to, to understand the internal causes of anger from now till forevermore um, when you download that. So if you, if you do the course, it's already embedded in the course as one of the tools that's part of the course. So you don't even need to download it separately if you don't want to. But um, yeah. it's there for the taking if you want to take advantage of it. I am going to open this up for questions. Uh, if you still have a few minutes, Mort. Absolutely. You have a moment? <laughs> I've gone through Mort's class, and I think one of the best parts for me being internet challenged, uh, not so much anymore. We finally got our satellite working here in Tasmania. But, um, you know, a lot of the modules are very small little tidbits that you can go in, do 15 minutes, read, watch a seven-minute video, do your thinking, turn it down, come back when you have time. And um, I really like the way you've broken that up. So I think that's a huge plus um, for, for, again, particularly for people like me who are internet challenged or time challenged, thinking, oh, do I have to spend four hours at once to do this? No, you can pick it up, put it down. Um, great, um, great short little videos to, to work through and um, to work through the whole program. So I absolutely highly recommend this for anyone who's considering it. And especially if you're a coach or uh, do any type of that type of work, it's Mort's approach is, is really is unique in how you're going to look at it and how you can um, start approaching the, the entire subject of working with your clients on the same subject. So I know Bill, you were Bill, you mentioned you do this um, with business owners and in businesses, and I'm wondering maybe more you can address how someone could apply these same tactics and techniques uh, as part of their coaching or training program. Yeah, well, I've done, an, I've done a number of um, presentations for businesses and business groups, and you can, this, this, this whole process lends itself to workshops you know, longer than what we're doing tonight, but, you know, it could be all half day or full day workshops. And then, so you can introduce people to some of these concepts and work with them a little bit with them. And then as a takeaway at the end of the program, you can funnel them into uh, the course so that they, they have a live, they have live training, live interaction for however long the company wants to expose them to that. And, and then the course can be the next piece um, that, that once they've been sort of, uh, you know, uh, introduced to the whole approach, if they want to dig into it deeper, they can, they can do that. So I've, I've yeah. combined the two in, in many instances, and um, it's worked rather well. One of the other things I'm really excited about doing, um, you asked me earlier on what, what, are, what are some of the things I'm excited about uh, for this year and beyond, but uh, I, I can see a number of uh, com uh, vacation courses, uh, travel wellness courses, for example, where you go, people go on vacation anyway to get rid of their stress, but what happens is they come back in a week or two later you know, <laughs> they're right back in the same. Exhausted, yeah. Yeah, they're right back in the same situation they were before. So wouldn't it be great if you could go on vacation at a resort or on a cruise or something like that, and then you have a you have a little workshop piece each day you're you're on vacation, and and then you go home and then you have access to this course uh, after you have that introduction, and so not only do you go on vacation and and reduce your stress by being on vacation, but now you've got a whole new mindset and a whole new set of tools and a whole new system so that you don't go back into that same, you know, high stress level that you went on vacation to escape from. But, you know, most of the time people go on vacation, they don't learn anything. Uh, wouldn't it be great if you can find a learning opportunity and a follow-up learning opportunity um, with a vacation? And, and, and I think with the whole travel wellness or wellness travel movement that's happening today, I, I think there's going to be more interest and demand. And I've already seen, you know, I've gotten some inquiries of people who want me to do a uh, cruise uh, package, stress elimination cruise, and uh, oh, that's a fantastic idea! I love doing, that thought. We're doing some local. Yeah. We're doing some local um, workshops here in Baltimore uh, in the coming year. So that, that's another opportunity to do things. And, and, and uh, from Bill's perspective, it's the kind of thing where you can do these kind of presentations for companies and corporations as well. Yeah, great. 
Yeah, I can easily see integrating a lot of your concepts into a lot of the same training that I do as well and working with people on how do you build the systems in your business so that you're less stressed and how do you adjust what are the prob the actual problems now that you have in your business? Yeah. So that we can get yeah. the Well you know so it's, we funny. Don't have to just, yeah. it's funny it's funny. People talk about stress at work. Yeah. And the truth about stress at work doesn't matter what occupation you're in or how stressful an occupation you're in. The truth about stress at work is that at least 50% of it is not knowing how to deal with emotions well and not knowing how to deal with relationship issues well. And yeah. if, you, if you nail those two things, which this system, you know, my home study course is, is very strong in, if you get well grounded in how to tackle those issues uh, very, very strongly, You've, you've just handled 50% of your stress at work. Yeah. Like a physician or a dentist or an entrepreneur or a police officer or a teacher, it doesn't matter. You know, you're, a lot of the day you're struggling with your emotional reactions, yours and other people's, and, and, uh, and potential relationship conflicts on the job. And granted, there are other stresses that are uh, stressful problems that may be pertinent to a particular occupation. You know, as a physician, we have certain issues that other people don't necessarily have to deal with, but other people in other occupations, you know, have things that we don't, ha I don't have to deal with. So uh, there, there are some specific, and then you have to do the same thing with those. You have to identify the problems and understand the causes and, and deal with the causes if you really want to eliminate those, those difficulties or sources of stress. Let's see, I'm just gonna add this to the slide here, how you can get the, the really special deal. And um, I was actually amazed that uh, <laughs> Dr. Orman was willing to lower the price so much because I know he's been a charging $2,000 for this uh, from day one. So we're really thrilled that he was able to make some special adjustments for us today. And uh, I think it's well worth the jumping on and taking a look at that page and at the minimum, go ahead and, and download that uh, special freebie that you'll get automatically if you sign up for his class. And um, otherwise, uh, please type in any questions you've got, or otherwise I think we're just gonna, we'll end that here. And uh, really great having you on the call today, Dr. Orman. Yeah, great. Well, we still have a lot of people hanging on the call. They've been hanging on every word you said, Mort, and I really, really appreciate your time. It's completely changed how I view um, the concept of stress and stress management and stress elimination and i um, really grateful for having you here today oh. and I hope everyone gets an opportunity to take a look and, uh, and look very closely at the program because it is an amazing setup that you've got here with this 10-week course and um, we encourage all of you to just jump in if you can if, if you decide you hate it uh, you got a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you've got no risk to, to give it a shot and see how, how it goes for you. Absolutely. So once again, thank you so much for putting this together and taking the initiative to do that and inviting uh, your folks to learn about this and, and the opportunity that it can afford them. And I'm very happy to have been able to spend the time with you all. Yeah, great. All right, I'm going to hang up now. Thank you all and catch you all soon.